Good morning. Uh, let's talk about mowers in, in special. I'm going to talk about uh, some uh, tricks and some techniques to deobfuscate mowers. Uh, this is a very technical uh, talk. This talk has two parts. Uh, the first part, we have some concepts about third slide. And the second part, um, dozens and dozens of code in different languages, Python, uh, Ruby, C Sharp, C, uh, handling uh, our problem. My idea here is to propose a very simple obfuscate code, very simple, very short, and try to handle it using different platforms, different frameworks. My name is Alexandre Borges, here is my profile. Basically, um, I'm a malware and security researcher. I'm from Brazil. This is our agenda, uh, simple introductions, some details about anti-reversing, and I will propose a very short sample to handle using different uh, frameworks, and finally, a very short um, anti-virtual machine trick that I saw some months ago, okay? <coughs> I've been uh, analyzing more for many years, and basically, most of them are packed uh, using some of these packers. Uh, Aspec, Armadillo, Petit, and so on. You know, most of them, we know how to unpack. It's uh, pretty easy to unpack. Uh, some, of, some of them, it's not so easy. However, uh, we know most of uh, memory APIs, we know about debuggers, so we can open the debugger, set some breakpoints, and dump uh, any kind of unpacking binary or inject code from the memory. It's so easy to do that. Almost everyone knows how to do that. Uh, additionally, we can use other uh, different tricks or the different tools. For example, PC from Hasherizade is a very nice tool to dump unpacked uh, binary and inject code from the memory automatically. It's a tool that uh, makes your life easier. We also can use, uh, for example, volatility. You can dump. Uh, binary unpacked in the memory uh, using some easy plugins, for example, in this case, proc dump, and it, we can uh, fix the import address table using ipscan. So we are able to open this binary, fix it in, inside the IDA Pro, and try to analyze. We can uh, also write some very short scripts uh, for some specific debuggers, such as X64 debugger. In this case, I'm automatizing the trick. I'm trying to dump, unpack the binaries, inject code from the memory by using a script to automatize my job. It's so easy too. I try to comment some lines for you, uh, read later, uh, for helping later. We have, for example, here one, two, three slides, including a very short script for X64 debugger. It's so easy, it's so straight. However, things are not so easy. Obfuscation is used in any kind of commercial products, Mars mainly using obfuscation. Uh, these techniques, or several kinds of techniques, don't protect the code itself, only make our lives harder. We can, for example, use IDA Pro. We can write a simple plugin for IDA Pro to handle this kind of anti-reverse 
techniques. We can even uh, write, for example, a simple loader to load uh, a new binary. For example, in this case, MBR. It's pretty easy to do that. Eventually, uh, if you don't know how to write a simple IDAPRO plugin, I left you here some step by step. I show you here how to set up your environment to write some plugins to IDAPRO using Visual Studio 2017. I left some slides here showing you how to set up your environment step by step to help you to write some plugins for IDAPRO. One slide, two slides, three slides. For additional help, I wrote a very short plugin here uh, to find web links inside a binary. Once again, I try to comment line by line to help you, to help you to learn how to write a simple plugin for IDAPRO. Of course, you can use the same technique, the same approach, the same structure to write your own plugin. I comment every single line. I try to uh, make my explanation here clear. And of course, I run my plugin, showing you that it works. Uh, my simple plugin for Ida Pro finds each web link inside the binary. But what about advanced packers? What about advanced protectors? For example, nowadays we have so hard protectors to circumvent. For example, the media, virtual protect, Arxan, Agile. Every single these advanced packers are very, very complex. They force several different tricks, several different techniques to prevent you to reverse the code. Of course, most of these protectors are focused on 64 uh, code. Usually, they remove the import address table of each kind of malicious code. Most of them encrypt every single string inside the binary. Uh, worst, these protectors uh, using a very special technique to prevent you uh, uh, of uh, dump a uh, binary code from, uh, from memory because this binary code is encrypted on the memory. If you are using a .NET protector such as Agile, this special protector rename classes, methods, fields, external references, and so on. And almost all of them use a kind of private virtual machine. In this case, it's so complex because we don't know the internals of these private virtual machines. All instructors, all instructions in uh, Intel are turned to a virtualized instruction inside this private virtual machine. We don't know the internals of this private inter uh, uh, virtual machine. It's very complex to break it. Most of, most of instructions uh, inside this virtual machine are encrypted on the memory, so it's so complicated to understand. The obfuscation is stack-based. I mean, it's uh, very hard to handle it using any kind of static trick. You need to run the code to break this kind of trick and obfuscation. The virtualized code is polymorphic. I mean, one Intel instruction is mapped for many different virtualized codes. 
this uh, this uh, technique is used by almost all kind of advanced protectors. There are lots of fake uh, push instructions. There are many dead codes. There are several code reordering, trying to. Uh, some, uh, I believe that the uh, the uh, better word is something a uh, kind of uh, spaghetti code. There are uh, a very usual trick named the code flattening. Code flattening. I will be. Uh, I mean, I will be uh, speaking about that later. There are tons of anti-reversing and anti-virtual uh, machine techniques. And in this case, I will show you here a very strange technique that I, I saw some month ago uh, using temperature. As I told you, we don't know how these private virtual machines work. We don't know anything about its internals. But we know that most of them has the same way of work. Fetch instructions, decoding, finally the pointer to handler, and finally execute the handler of the virtualized instruction. A better graph here Instruction is fetched, decoded, and dispatcher pick up one of these handlers to execute our instruction or virtualize instruction. In the real world, is a bit different. Uh, most virtualized instructions are organized into an array. So if you see lots of index inside the virtualized code. So each index takes to an encrypted instruction. This instruction is decrypted. Having the opcode, it points to a function pointer. And after this function pointer, to a handler that is executed. It's easy to break protectors such as Temira, virtual protect, and so on? No, it's not easy. We know. For example, at start, it's so complicated to decide, to distinguish if our code is or not virtualized. We don't know. It's so complicated to distinguish of a virt be between a virtualized code and a no virtualized code. Most time, prologues and epilogues are not virtualized. So you will have uh, a kind of mix of code. Some code are virtualized, some code are not virtualized. If you try to open in the IDA Pro, horrible, you will see lots of red and gray blocks. I mean, lots of non-functions and data. It's so hard to handle this kind of code. Sometimes you find uh, virtual machine handlers inside the data section. Probably it, uh, this, uh, this uh, issue uh, becomes a, a serious problem for you. You won't see a uh, Holy block contains all instructions. Uh, this holy block is split in several ones and scattered in the code. Worst is mixed with data. So you have two problems. Find it, each instruction block and try to put together. If you try to find, for example, calls to import the functions, impossible because most of them are zeroed, because they are restored later. If these references are not zeroed, it's so complicated yet because uh, you won't see 
uh, uh, absolute address to the import function. You see a relative address. So it, you have a base address, and you have several offsets pointed to each imported function. Of course, most API names are hashed, uh, like a shellcode. According to my experience, these packers don't virtualize all instructions. Don't virtualize. For example, suppose that I have, I don't, I don't know, 100 instructions in x86 processors. These packers virtualize some of them, just some of them. There are a serious mix between data, virtualized instructions, no virtualized instructions, and everything is mixed over the code. Uh, most API calls are for the to a stub, and from this stub is for the to the original API. You see several kind of hidden function code. This kind of hidden function code comes from the data. For example, when the code runs, uh, this function code is uh, are loaded into memory and executed from there. So we have some questions. How can I handle these advanced packers? My first approach is try to understand how much, uh, how many instructions I have. First approach. Second, try to classify these instructions. For example, conditionals, jumps, unconditionals, jumps, access to memory, etc. Uh, I always try to find any kind of similarity between the virtualized instructions and Intel instructions. It's a good approach. We have, uh, most time, I try to understand the transition between the Intel world to virtualize the world. So I try to find uh, responsible instructions to make this transition. Intel to virtualized and back, virtualized to Intel. Uh, as I told you, most of these instructions are encrypted on the memory. So it's so hard to handle because you can, you can uh, dump, you can see, you can change. Furthermore, there are many other tricks being used when you are, hang, uh, you are working with uh, virtualized packers, such as the MIDA, uh, Virtual Protect, so on, for, for example. Other tricks, constant unfolding, in this case, one, uh, a single constant is transformed to uh, many ones. Pattern-based obfuscation, I will talk about later in a practical example. Many, many inline instructions, of course. Anti-memory technique. Tons of garbage code. Tons of code duplication. Many indirections, control control indirections, for example, using return to skip some uh, instructions, or use exceptions. You see opaque predicate. Opaque predicate is something like that. For example, I have a jump Z, G, jump NZ, back-to-back -back condition. Apparently, I have a, a some kind of choice. But at the end, only one of them is executed, and the other one is always bad. 
I have several anti-debug techniques and, of course, polymorphism. Take this sample. This is a very, very simple C code. Make only a loop. Uh, the execution here is linear, straight. However, these packers try to use code flattening. In this case, they turn a linear execution in a multi-branched execution. For example, this code reversed in the IDA pro here. After applying code flattening, I have this picture. It's the same code, the same execution, but in other form. If you want, you can use this framework, Obfuscation WL VM, to apply code flattening. I show you here how to install it. I show you here how to run. And after applying code flattening, that same code is turned to a multi-branched code. So easy, so quick. This is the general overview. This is our decompiled code. Pay attention. Look at that. We have now. Now we have a while, some if and else statements, different from the original code. This is an opaque property case. As I told you, a back-to-back jump-z, jump-n-z condition. In this case, only the jump z is taken because this instruction XOR here. A very classical case, uh, a shell code. Here we have the decryption routine. And once I uh, run a very uh, short and simple IDA Pro script, I decrypt this shell code here. A very usual call stack manipulation. Apparently, this is the true return instruction. But if you pay attention, this return is skipping these uh, three blue instructions, and the true return is this one. So, the second part. Let's to apply some uh, techniques to the obfuscate code. I pick up a very simple uh, example. Imagine, I have only this instruction, edge EAX, ECX. I obfuscated the stage two. I obfuscate again, the stage three. I obfuscate again, the stage four. So this instruction is equal all these instructions. My question, how to reverse this process from stage four to stage one? This is a very, very simple obfuscation, but I need to take an educational sample. First, I try Metasm. Metasm is, is a very, very nice framework to handle this kind of obfuscation. I show here how to install for you trying later. And take a look. I inserted here our obfuscate code. This stage four, I inserted here. I try to comment each important line to help me later. I, I, I comment some important line, but the most important line here is this one in yellow, initializing the backtrack, the backtrack engine. Uh, this is a very simple and almost ridiculous hub code. 
And once I run it, my code show our original obfuscate code, execute instruction by instruction, showing the contacts, the registers, one by one, and finally, here at top, EAX is equal EAX plus CX. We solved our problem symbolically. Very, very, very simple. Our FT instructions. Other approach. I use Keystone and UMO. In this case, I show you how to install Keystone here, step by step. It's so easy. Keystone is a kind of assembly. So I, I will turn opcodes to x decimal codes. I wrote a very simple C code here. Once again, I inserted here our obfuscate code, named as confidence. Start here, uh, sorry, create here the Keystone engine, and here I start the Keystone engine. Here is the make file that I use. I compiled, run, and here we have our Xcode. I saved in a file named confidence 2019.bin. I can prove that the inverse operation is true because I wrote other code using capstone. Capstone make the inverse operation. I have uh, the X code and I can turn it to the op code. Once again, I try to comment here and I prove that we have our original code. I open uh, our file confidence2019.bin in the IDA Pro. And I installed UMU. I set up our original uh, or initial register, EAX to 3, ECX to 6, and run our code. Numerically, we have EAX equal 9. This time, I solved our problem using a numeric approach. I try to uh, use uh, Capstone engine. Capstone is a very nice emulator. Once again, I wrote, uh, I wrote here a very simple C program. Inserted our uh, X decimal here. My comments are, are in blue, okay, blue. And the key point here is this point. Well, uh, sorry, the key point here is here. I set up EAX to four, ECX to seven, I set up our stack to a minimal size. And I run our capstone engine here. Once again, our initial register EAX4, ECX7, executed instruction by instruction. And finally, we have the answer EAX is equal EAX plus ECX, in this case, B11. I also try Miasm. Miasm is the most popular and powerful framework to handle any kind of obfuscation. Miasm support uh, different platforms. I show you how to install Miasm here, step by step. I test Miasm, nice graph, 
And let's return it to our problem. I open our file here, confidence2019.bin. I'm using 32 bits. I set the just-in-time engine to WLVM. I set the initial address. I set the initial value of EAX to 3, ECX to 6. I set the breakpoint to the final of our code. And I just run. Once again, I try to comment line by line here for help you. Our original code, disassembled, executing line by line, instru instruction by instruction. And finally, EAX is equal to 9. OK. It makes sense, because EAX 3, ECX 6, 3 plus 6, 9. But I can solve the same problem using miasm symbolically. I open a Python prompt here. And it's almost the same, but here at the bottom, I'm using a symbolic execution engine to make the same solution, the same approach, but using symbols. Instruction by instruction is executed. And finally, I'm able to find that EAX is equal EAX initial plus ECX initial. So easy to do that. As you see, you need to know how to program in several languages. Hackers, no programming, always. I'm using Triton too. Triton is a modern approach and technique to handle the same kind of obfuscation. Triton supports the most uh, common architectures. Triton supports symbolic execution code. In this case, you can emulate only a part of the program. Or, concolic execution, you can run and analyze the whole program. Again, I show you how to install Triton without PIN, PIN from Intel. And I show how to install the same Triton by using PIN. Let's try to solve our problem here. I insert our um, obfuscate code here in hexadecimal. I try to commit line by line here. Uh, I try to comment each, uh, each line of this written code in blue to help you. And the key point here, uh, sorry, uh, here I show you how to convert each opcode to hexadecimal using HASM, but you can use either Pro, Hadera, Ghidra, and so on. And uh, Yes, and I run our Triton program in Python. Once again, executing line by line, showing uh, the registers. And uh, finally, I prove that all that obfuscate code is only a ad op operation between two registers. I try a new approach using Triton, but solve our problem numerically. I insert again our obfuscate code here. But this time, I set up our initial registers. EA, uh, uh, stack, EBP, EAX2, two, two, EAX7. I set up the entry point here. And, uh, start our emulation step by step. 
our code is executed. And finally, we have EAX equal 9. You can use Hadar too. Hadar is a very nice framework to emulate code too. Very nice. I open our confidence to 2019.bin in 32 bits. I start the emulation. We, we, we can see here all the ECU comments. I set up the EAX to 7, ECX in 2. I set up the breakpoint to the final R code. And finally, I run EAX equal 9. So easy. You can uh, also integrate Miasm and Hadar by using this special plugin, uh, R2M2. In this case, I show you how to do that here. And I open our code using this special plugin, Hadar minus A R2 M2 confidence 2019. In this case, Miasm works as the internal. Uh, Miasm provides all results to Hadar, and Hadar converts these results to ECL. Like this. And finally, the last topic. Um, about four or five months ago, I analyzed the uh, malware. And this malware was using a very odd technique to detect virtual machines using temperature. It's, uh, it's a very rare uh, technique, but you know, most malware, nowadays, most malware uh, have been using anti virtual machine techniques to detect VMware, VirtualBox, Parallels, and so on. It's so easy to uh, write a C sharp code to detect a virtual machine. For example, you can use uh, Win32 BIOS Manager class to do that. I show you here a, a, simple, sample, a, a simple example uh, using this class. And, of course, I comment uh, some classes here. I comment some functions here to help you. And finally, I run the code. So simple. But it's not our problem here. When analyzing this special malware, I try to reproduce this temperature technique in a C sharp uh, code. But uh, unfortunately, I receive a new reference exception, and I try to investigate. I open the Windows Manage Instrumentation Tester. I connect, uh, click and uh, click it on Query. I queried, and our result. I found that there isn't any kind of temperature probe inside a virtual machine. So that's the trick. Uh, recent malwares have been used this trick to distinguish a physical host of a virtual host. So I implemented it using a very simple C-sharp code here. And, and of course, worked. In a physical host, in a physical host, in a virtual machine, guest. So easy, so practical, so quick. Uh, most of my time uh, is filled uh, by analyzing very special malwares, 
all of them use very special tricks, very advanced tricks. Um, it's almost impossible to solve this kind of malware only using tools. You need to write several programs, several codes in several languages to handle and manage this kind of problem. So my strong recommendation is learn to program in several languages because you will need it. Our conclusion, it's impossible to handle these special malwares by using only tools. You need to know all of these anti-reverse techniques first. Then you can use special fr frameworks like Mias, Metas, Metriton, and, and so on to manage this code. Of course, emulation is a strong alternative. The trace uh, was recently ported to Windows, and I've been using to uh, trace uh, calls in the kernel length to handle special malwares. It's a, it's a very nice uh, uh, tool to uh, manage this kind of uh, special packers. Okay. That's it. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs> any questions? Someone? Any questions? So easy? So, please. Hi, uh, I have a question because so far you showed us some simple examples like how to obfuscate, you know, A plus B. So I was wondering how easier it is compared to what you actually do when you have to face some actual code that you have to deobfuscate. Uh, I show uh, this very simple sample here because we have only 45 minutes. But in a real case, I take two weeks about two weeks to handle a very complex code. For example, my uh, success rate is about 6% uh, using uh, this kind of special, special protectors, uh, Temida, v VM Protect, and so on. So uh, I, uh, I've chosen this uh, educational sample to show you uh, uh, how to handle it. But, uh, in the real world is a bit difficult. But uh, just to give us like some idea how many instructions are we talking about when you're looking at the code? Like what's the biggest, you know, disassembly that you have looked at just uh, in pure x86, for example? Remember that I explain you. Uh, most time, not all uh, x86 uh, x instructions uh, Instructors, instructions are virtualized, mm -hmm. only some of them. For example, about 50 instructions are virtualized. The remaining ones are not. But, for example, most of these packers, I don't know, have, uh, I, I have uh, about uh, at minimum, 1,000 functions, at minimum. OK, thank you. More questions? It's so, so easy. <laughs> no? Thank you so much. Oh, oh sorry. You spoke uh, on learning multiple languages. So you have uh, sharp, uh, C sharp as a preferred. Uh, do you have any suggestion for somebody? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, my strong suggestion is learn, of course, C, C++, Python, Ruby, and C sharp. However, a uh, better suggestion is learning uh, how to program device drivers, because most modern uh, rootkits use device drivers using NT module, WDM module, and WDF. 
uh, uh, these three models cover 20, 40 years only. <laughs> More questions? Thank you so much.